All right. And finally, Anderson Cooper. Before we begin with tonight's broadcast, I want to say something about what we witnessed at last night's town hall. Many of you have expressed deep anger and disappointment. Many of you are upset that someone who attempted to destroy our democracy was invited to sit on a stage in front of a crowd of Republican voters to answer questions and predictably continued to spew lie after lie after lie. And I get it. It was disturbing. It was disturbing to see and hear that person refer to a black law enforcement officer as a thug, an adjective he used many times to describe black men, and call Caitlin Collins, the moderator, nasty, which is what he calls any woman who stands up to him. It was disturbing to hear him speak so highly of QAnon conspirators and insurrectionists who assaulted police officers in our democracy on January 6. And it was awful to hear him spread ridiculous lies about the election. As good a job as Caitlin Collins did trying to fact check him, it is impossible to fact check fully because he lies so shamelessly. Now, many of you think CNN shouldn't have given him any platform to speak, and I understand the anger about that. Giving him the audience, the time, I get that. But this is what I also get. The man you were so disturbed to see and hear from last night, that man is the front runner for the Republican nomination for president. Bro, there's a difference between Trump being platformed, right? When he's like literally the president and doing shit and then you're covering it versus giving Trump an hour with his own crowd, okay? So he can do what he does best, okay? I'm sorry, you did it for the ratings. You love Donald Trump. I love Donald Trump too, okay? For different reasons than you do. I just think he's great content, okay? I am personally entertained by how much of a psycho he is. Part of that is because I've completely given up on the idea that there's any way to combat these people, that there's any sort of like meaningful change that we can make in this country. Part of the reason is because it's just not, you know, these guys, these guys in CNN in, in, that hold institutional power in mainstream media are people who also literally want Trump to be president. You love him for the same reason. Well, there's a difference. I don't want Donald Trump to be president, but if he's going to be president, at least like, let's have some fun times. You know what I mean? These guys actually do have some power to stop that. If I'm at CNN, I'm not putting him on there. If I'm a a, a Democratic Party loving, uh, you know, individual. I'm not putting Donald Trump up there on that fucking podium in front of his goddamn fucking fans, dude. That's crazy. He's the front runner for the GOP. I know, but the fucking primaries haven't even started, dog. What are you talking about? You held a single person town hall for Donald Trump. Like, you don't need to do that. You, you want to hold a debate? I mean, you know, Trump will, there's going to be debates. You know what I mean? It's impossible for there not to be debates. But like, that's entirely different than like having a fucking primary where you give him airtime with exclusive content that you were copy striking other people for watching, by the way. Like, it's ridiculous. Didn't Fox do that with Bernie Sanders? Yeah, and it was awesome. You wanna know why? Because I like Bernie Sanders. And I think Bernie Sanders has a lot to say that the Fox News audience should hear from. That is precisely the reason why I don't like when CNN does this. But ultimately, I don't give a shit either. Like, let's be real. It's, if it's Trump v fucking Biden again, who gives a shit at this point? It's like, it's completely out of my hands. There's nothing I can say or do. It's just really funny to watch all of these media figures though, like take this role where they're like, well, we're serious about this. You have to hear things that are disappointing and, and maddening at times because this man is the president and he's going to be the president again, by the way, because I'm doing everything in my power to make that happen. <laughs> and according to polling, no other Republican is even close. That man you were so upset to hear from last night, he may be president of the United States in less than two years. <laughs> He's saying it, dude. Let's go. Yeah. And I'll do everything in my power to make that happen. I, Anderson Cooper, a Vanderbilt, by the way, will do everything in my power to do that. And that audience that upset you, that's a sampling of about half the country. They are not true. Literally not true. That's not true. Why are they going? This is so 2016. It's awesome. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's so fire. That's this is literally like, hold up. We have to let them cook uh, argument that we've heard so many times. It's so funny. We're going to dude. They're going to have Nazis on again. I think your family members, your neighbors, and they are voting. And many said they're voting for him. Maybe you haven't been paying attention to him since he left office. Maybe you've been enjoying not hearing from him, thinking it can't happen again. Some investigation is gonna stop him. Well, it hasn't so far. So if last night showed anything, it showed it can happen again. If you're angry or upset, I understand, but you have the power to do something about it. You can actually get involved. You can make a difference, whatever side of the aisle you're on. <laughs> 
After last night, none of us can say- He's, Dude, why are you talking like you're not a part of the institution that you're currently defending, mind you, for like its role in actively propping up this big bad guy that you're still claiming is big and bad? We asked Republican senators for their thoughts about last night. Some preferred not to say anything, others did. Here's a sampling of what we heard. What was the reason for you not supporting him? Where do I begin? <laughs> President Trump's judgment is, is uh, wrong in this case. Uh, President Putin, and his government have in, <laughs> engaged in war crimes. I think people saw last night uh, what they would get with another term of... Yeah, that's what they were mad about. Trump's takes on Putin. Dude, this is awesome, man. That's that's your takeaway? That's the one thing? He's like, yeah, when he said, because war is bad for everybody? Uh, Donald Trump is president, uh, which is uh, completely untethered to the truth. Uh, uncertain as to whether he wants Russia or Ukraine to win uh, in the... Uh, brutal conflict which Russia has imposed on Ukraine. If you're asking me, do I think you should pardon people who engaged in like rioting behavior? No, I don't. Anybody who crossed in uh, to the uh, end of the Capitol under the circumstances that I... I'm losing my mind. This is 2016. Prominent Republicans coming out in the primaries and speaking out against Donald Trump saying he's like bad. I feel like capitalist profit seeking has basically kicked our, our content cycle into overdrive. Where like back in the day, trend cycles and news cycles would take like a decade to, to come back around. Now we're burning through it, it's every four years. The time loop is like whittled away until it was every fucking four years where you see the same shit. I witnessed firsthand, uh, it's hard for me to have a positive predisposition towards them. What more now from Jessica Dean, she's at the Capitol Forest tonight. What more are you hearing tonight, Jessica? Well, let's start first with the Republicans, both in the Senate and the House. You just heard from some Senate Republicans there, Anderson, and, and people like uh, Senator Mitt Romney. Uh, that's somebody who has been pretty outspoken against former President Donald Trump. But it was somewhat surprising to see somebody like Senator Josh Hawley uh, push back against some of his positions that he took last night. And what we heard again and again in talking with these Republican members who, who pushed back against and had very different opinions uh, than former President Trump, it really kind of circled around three issues. It was uh, Ukraine and Vladimir Putin and if he is a war criminal or not and, and who should win that war. It was January 6th and uh, former President Trump's uh, pledge to perhaps pardon uh, people who were here at the Capitol as insurrectionists who have been convicted and are serving time. And then it was also, of course, the debt ceiling, which is what looms very heavy here right now as they work toward that June 1st deadline and uh, allowing um, the nation to default. Uh, also interesting, Anderson, just to go back to the, to the Senate Republicans, for one second. We did talk to the Senate Majority Whip, uh, John Thune, who said it looks like a lot of Democratic campaign ads were written last night. All right, Jessica Dean, appreciate it. Want to get some perspective now with me here, Republican consultant and CNN political commentator, Margaret Hoover, <laughs> host of Firing Line on PBS. Also, Anthony Scaramucci, who briefly served as White House Communications Director to the former president, and our own chief White House correspondent, Phil Mattingly. Anthony, do you think anything has happened in the past 24 hours that have changed the dynamics of this GOP primary race? Um, not yet, but I think you guys are bringing up something that could change it, and that is an onslaught of senators and House of Representatives, congressional leaders what? going against the president. I think what? that would be a snowball. Dude, this analysis is so bad, dude. This is awesome. They have to be willingly, they, they have to know better. I don't think that they're this stupid. No, 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 there's no way. There's no way. Bro, they, no. Am I crazy? Did I travel back in time? Someone explain to me. Did I travel back in time? Am I back in 2015? What's going on right now? Guys, I'm from the future. I found myself trapped in this London hotel, but I'm actually supposed to be living in California, Los Angeles in 2023. And let me tell you something. What these panelists are saying right now is crazy. I've heard these before. I heard them say it in 2015, which is now, right now. You're hearing them, right? I heard them again in 2020. It's bullshit. Donald Trump wins, okay? And CNN helps a lot. The Clinton campaign with uh, what we what we later found out called the Pied Piper strategy wanted the media to, to cover Donald Trump a lot in the primaries because they thought it was the easy to beat candidate. She was wrong. Donald Trump won. Rolling in a direction that he actually couldn't stop. And so they're still fearing him because he's a big bully and their political consultants are telling him don't say anything about him or don't make a comment but if they start to stand up to him the way Mitt Romney did and you saw a glimmer of that with Senator Hawley mm. you will blunt him you will slow him down and remember when the witch in the Wizard of Oz the water accidentally spilled on the witch and she started melting 
the soldiers turned to Dorothy and said, hey, geez, I'm sorry that, that we did this. And I think we're getting to that point right now where the water has to hit Trump and he has to start melting and they have to show some bravery and courage. Mm. Yeah. There's a lot of munchkins on Capitol Hill, though. I mean, are they are they <laughs> um, really ready to see More in the House of Representatives than the Senate, I would say. I mean, that's about I mean, this is also about our electoral incentives and, you know, what it takes to have political courage. I'm going to kiss courage, myself. Right. Um, there are U.S. senators who have recently been elected, who voice the, who absolutely agree with everything Senator Tillis just said, by the way, just reelected and didn't really mince words there in, in suggesting that he didn't really support <laughs> returning an insurrectionist to the White House. Um, so so I think you're right, Anthony. This is the moment where Republicans and elder statesmen and women of the Republican Party have to self-police. We haven't done it for six years, and we have to start now, and it's going to be what? behind closed doors, and it's going to be open in public, but it has to be Republican on Republican, because the problem with Donald Trump's inertia right now is that he's seen as a victim by the, the media, the Democrats, the other people, and that's emboldening him. But if this is a Republican, well, what are you Republican saying? What are you saying, front dude? This is to so Donald dumb. Trump, then you got a chance at building a wedge and actually building momentum for someone else. When you take a step back from the very visceral passions of last night, one Democrat said this entire event was just triggering for our entire party, and I think we all get it and understand it. You addressed it. At the triggering. Dude, that's so belittling, dude. Oh God, I hate this. I, I can't watch this discourse. I can't. I'm gonna. This is more triggering than anything they could have ever done. Okay. 